The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, and he watched Jesus walk by. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means, which translated means teacher, where are, you say, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now today, let me, let me invite you to, to reflect on, uh, number one, about the, the, the role of John. The number two about the role of Andrew no, in, the, in the gospel for today. No? And then the third point that I will invite you to reflect on is that, that very interesting thing uh, that the Lord used to respond to the, to the, uh, the two apostles, in, which includes Andrew. No? Uh, where, uh, when they asked, Rabbi, where, do you, where are you staying? When the Lord says, come and, come and you will see. No? So that last point to reflect on. No? So first about the role of John the Baptist and Andrew. No? Of course, John the Baptist, as we had mentioned no, in, during the Simbang Gabi and then in, in subsequent Gospels where John the Baptist was, was um, part of the narrative, no, um, John always pointed to Christ. No? That, was one of the, one of the, that was one of the, you might say, distinct qualities of the witnessing of John, John the Baptist. No? It was always pointing people to God, directing people to God, no? and always revealing to the people Whenever the Messiah was present, remember he was he was his main job was to 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 become the precursor to the Messiah, no. And here you see that very clearly, no. As John now pro proclaims to the people, no, to his and his two disciples eventually follow the, the Lord. He says, "Behold, the Lamb of God," no. And because of that, his two disciples, including Andrew, no, followed Jesus, no. And maybe that first point to reflect on, no. Uh, have we in our own witnessing, in our own, uh, in a sense, in our own living out our mission, have we led people to Christ? No? In the same way that John the Baptist led people to Christ, no? always pointing to Christ. I think it's very important for us to ask ourselves that. No? As I always tell people at the end of the day, especially for us priests, no? that we must always become like another John the Baptist, no? always pointing to Christ and never calling attention to ourselves. No? Maybe that first point to reflect on. No? Are we like John the Baptist? No? And the second point is very, very similar, no? the role of Andrew. No? Here you see Andrew now bringing Peter to Christ. No? Andrew now says, no, we have found the Messiah and brings his brother Peter to Christ. No? And if you, if you look at later on also in the Gospel of John, it is Andrew who brings the young boy with five loaves and two fish during the multiplication of the loaves and fish. No? So again, that, that second point to reflect on, no? Andrew always facilitated no, bringing people to Christ. No? And when you, when you think about it in these two instances, the two people or the two persons he brought to Christ played a very crucial role. No? In the case of Peter, of course, Peter becomes the first leader of the church, no? And then later on, the multiplication of the loaves and fish, it was precisely because of Andrew's bringing this young boy with five loaves and two fish that allowed the miracle to take place. No? So maybe that, that second point to reflect on, do we bring people to Christ that allows the mission of Christ to unfold, that allows the miracles to, to happen? No? In the case of, of Andrew bringing Peter, you now have the first leader of the church no? to whom the Lord will entrust the, the keys of the church no? on which he will build this church. No? The foundation is Peter, Cephas, the rock. 
And then the other the other thing is the boy, no? The five the boy the boy with the five loaves and two fish, no? Because of Andrew bringing the boy to Christ, the miracle takes place, no? The miracle was made possible, no? So here again is a second way, no, of witnessing, no? By bringing people to Christ, no? If if John the Baptist pointed to Christ and and people followed Christ because of that, here Andrew brings people to Christ to allow Christ to work out his plan and to work out his miracle. Are we also in a way like Andrew, no? Do we bring people, do we bring do we bring situations to Christ to allow Christ to work out his plan, no, and his miracles, no? And then finally, the last point to reflect on, no. You know, I remember when we were when we were in the seminary in in the Divisate, no, Sacred Heart Divisate. Uh, part of our we had that um, that prayer book of morning and and uh, and uh, evening prayers, and the title of the book was "Come and Come and See." No, here it says "Come and You Will See." No, and I guess when you look at that, it is really also representative of prayer. No, but again, prayer is spending time with the Lord. No, come and you will see. And I think it's very important for us to again at the beginning of this year, and also it's also to and also to remember that this year the Pope has declared this year 2024 as a year of prayer, in preparation for the Jubilee year in 2025, you not know, the year of hope. And I think it is a beautiful um, grace to pray for this coming year, for us to renew and to deepen our sense of prayer. You know, you know just just the other day, you know, I received. Um, I received a thank you message for a, a very close friend of mine way, way back, maybe, oh, maybe a friend 40 years ago, from 40 years ago, and uh, thanking me for the card and the gift that I sent during Christmas. And she was telling me how she was able to go back to Mass again because of, of, of the online Masses during the pandemic. And again, that is the moment of come and see. Because at the end of the day, you know, People renewing their devotion to the mass, even even if it is through these online ma online masses, if it is not an, if you are not experiencing the presence of God, the presence of Christ in your life because of prayer or because of this of the masses that we celebrate, then that is not the grace of God, no. But if it makes you come and see and to experience Christ again, then that is an authentic grace, no. And I'd like to invite you know, to really deepen, again, that sense of devotion to prayer and more especially to deepen a sense of devotion to the Mass. Come and you will see. And there, is, there, there are really bountiful graces to see you know, if we really deepen our devotion to the Mass and our devotion to prayer. And I would like to think that this year being declared a year of prayer, graces will be given if we ask for the grace to a renewed, for a renewed prayer life and a renewed devotion to the Mass, come and you will see. God will give you the grace. God will give us that grace. Siguro maganda no, na pag nilayan natin ngayong araw itong, itong ebanghelyo natin. Ano? Ngayon lalo na pal palapit na tayo sa, sa, ano, sa epiphany. No? Yung, ka, nung araw, ano yan, Three Kings. Ano? Siguro maganda na tingnan natin yung, yung mga ebanghelyo itong darating na araw. Una sa lahat, si San Juan Bautista. No? Ano yung kanyang naging pagsasaksi ulit, pagtistigo niya? Lagi niyang tinuturo ang tao sa Panginoon. Dito makita ninyo, sabi niya, ito ang kordero ng Diyos. At dahil doon, sumunod ang dalawang apostoles ng Panginoon. Isa sa kanila si San Andres. No? At yun ang isang masasabi natin, siguro pwede natin ipanalangin. No? Pwede ba tayong maging kagaya ni San Juan Bautista? na ating tinuturo ang tao sa Diyos, sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, upang sila ay sumunod sa Panginoon. At yung pangalawang punto ng pagninilay ay si San Andres, no? na makita natin dito. San Andres, dalawang beses natin siya makikita sa Ebanghelyo ni San Juan. Una ito, dinala niya si San Pedro sa Panginoon. No? At yung pangalawa sa, pag, yung, sa multiplication ng tinapay at isda, diba? siya yung nagdala ng bata na may limang tinapay at uh, dalawang isda, no? At dahil doon, naghanap ang, ang milagro ng Panginoon. Kaya mahagal, mahalaga na makita rin natin, no? Na kagaya ni San Andres, da, nadadala ba natin ang ating kapwa sa Panginoon? Sapagkat dito na may isasagawa ng Panginoon ang kanyang plano. Si, si 
si Pedro na naging pinuno ng simbahan, yung bata na dahil sa kanya nag nagmilagro ng, ng pagpaparami ng tinapay at isda. At ang huling punto sa lahat ay yung binanggit ng Panginoon dito sa Ebanghelyo. Nung tinanong nila San Andres, Panginoon saan kayo nakatira? Sabi ng Panginoon, hali kayo at tingnan ninyo. Ito ang panalangin. Ngayong 2024, sabi ng Santo Papa, ay taon ng panalangin. At siguro yun ang, yun ang buod ng panalangin, ang manahan kasama ng Panginoon. Ang tumungo sa Panginoon, manahan kasama na niya, kasama niya upang higit natin siyang makilala at higit natin siyang ma, 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 maging sentro ng ating buhay. No? At sana itong darating na taon ay magkaroon ng pag, pagpapalalim no? at pagpapasigla ng ating buhay panalangin, lalo lalo na ang debusyon natin sa Misa. Sapagat ang panalangin at ang, at ang Santa Misa ay dapat magpalalim ng ating ugnayan sa Panginoon. So let us pray that in this coming year of prayer, we may really spend time with the Lord as the Lord invites us, come and you will see.